going green can be boring until you meet California's Tesla Roadster, an electric car with a Lotus body, it can hit 60 miles per hour in just 4 seconds. Clean tech never looks so good. A bike's a my thing usually, but if you're going to get a sports car, I think this is the business. It's very fast and very, um, really fun to drive. And it's this type of pulse pumping out of investment hubs like Silicon Valley that's giving rise to the huge optimism around this space. The global economy may be in crisis, credit may have stalled, but this opportunity is so big that dollars continue to flow. It's open season right now. I think we're at the beginning of a great growth period. Uh, Ireland uh, can participate in that. I think it's a land grab and this is a great opportunity given that the nation has wonderful engineering expertise and infrastructure that's in place. Ireland Inc. has not simply been watching developments from California. Entrepreneurial spirit abounds and the state has also tried to prioritise. With one of the best wave resources in the world, Irish companies like Ocean Energy have been pushing hard to develop marketable electricity generation devices. Started in Cork, which has been hit hard by plant closures, the company argues the job potential from wave power is big. The potential for the main power industry in terms of jobs is approximately four to 6,000 jobs over the next six to eight years. In terms of job creation, we could be up there with Denmark, who have 23,000 jobs in the wind industry alone. That enthusiasm is matched by another company, WaveBob, which has managed to secure strategic investment from Euro energy giant Vattenfall AB and is now securing support in the US. On the tidal front, Open Hydro has been making exciting strides forward and picking up awards along the way, including this year from the Irish Technology Leadership Group in California. The company's vision is of deploying farms of tidal turbines under the world's oceans, silently and invisibly generating electricity at no cost to the environment. Other pioneering work is coming from ESB International and MCT, which deployed the world's first commercial-scale tidal power generating device in Strangford Lock. The C-Gen tidal device and the €4 million Euro ESBI investment is a further example of the commercial possibilities in the green tech sector. There is a huge potential for us to harness the energy from the ocean to produce a sustainable energy solution to be part of our overall energy mix. But if renewables are going to work, then the infrastructure has to change too. To ensure 40% of our electricity comes from renewables like wind, the ESP is investing 11 billion euro on network upgrading, becoming carbon neutral itself by 2035. The electricity grid operator Airgrid is also overhauling the network to the tune of 4 billion euro, so that it's possible to double electricity transmission capacity here by 2025. Bordnamone is making a major shift from peat provider to a green utility. Borgosh is also working hard in establishing its wind portfolio. But the government, generators and operators will all have to work hard on public buy-in, as building over 1,000 kilometres of new transmission infrastructure is going to court controversy. Strategic alliances are springing up between universities and existing companies on how to drum up business on clean tech, with Enterprise Ireland working hard to grow the indigenous base. One example is the Deploy project, which involves sensors providing real-time information on water quality, a project developed by the Tyndall Institute and Dublin City University, a Limerick company, and funded by the EPA and the Marine Institute. What we can do with this new state-of-the-art technology is monitor at a greater frequency and at a lower cost of ownership than ever before. So organisations who have responsibility for monitoring the environment or who want to research it can do a lot more than they could use in traditional methods. Research, testing and demonstration of different marine and environmental technologies is also taking place in Galway where the Smart Bay project is set to make big waves. Immense work is also being put into wireless sensors, which can regulate heating and also provide real-time information on where energy is effectively being wasted. This sensor can then feed back information about the conditions of the environment to a central management system which can allow you to control the environment and energy within a building. These could be the green shoots of new business, but it's going to take a lot of streamlining and coordination to replicate what's happening in other universities like in Tel Aviv. We need more of um bringing the researchers and business community together together with the, the, the policy makers so that the, the policies are informed, um, the, the researchers know that they're supported and um, the link to business can, can help to develop the ideas into, into jobs and uh, money. 
One way of making changes is getting startup companies to be partnered with existing giants like NTR, which now employs around 4,000 people around the globe. It's come a long way to becoming a global leader with innovations like its Stirling engine powered sun catcher concentrating solar systems. It's also making innovations in the area of waste management, where Green Star operates the country's most sophisticated automated recycling facility. The government says it hopes to stimulate business growth through clear policies such as its Smart Economy document. It's also providing subsidies for things like home insulation, a development which has been welcomed by the hard-up construction sector. On things like electric cars, it's involving international companies like Mitsubishi and utilities like ESB in switching 10% of the national fleet to electric cars by 2020. It's also seeking the assistance of business in how to formulate development opportunities. But call for greater speed, policy clarity and, critically, clear leadership which ensures laudable policies with ambitious targets are constantly reviewed and pushed forward. Another dimension, of course, is foreign direct investment and Ireland's ability to retain existing companies as well as securing new ones, similar to the world's leading network company, Cisco. First there was the telephone, then there was the television. Meet the next technology, telepresence. Good morning from Galway, Paul. Good morning to you, Mike. How are things going? Great. Excellent. This is a prime example with its prized 250 research and development jobs in Galway. Glen Dimplex is a prime example of what can be achieved. It's now the world's largest electrical heating business, employing more than 8,000 people. The group says its exceptional growth has been possible by a can-do attitude to business, and that's precisely what Ireland Inc. needs to replicate. Innovation in the right space, coupled with savvy business sense. Hopefully this meeting in Farmley can help identify some of the ingredients for that magic formula.